but, and but let it, the record show that Mike hated Civil War, found it uh, just repellent. <laughs> I read a, a review last night in the New York Post. Johnny Olinsky wrote a review. One star said it's an absolute uh, a bomb. It's a it's a it's a wasted movie. You it's, know what's weird, and and I think that that a lot of your distaste was that it is a not so skillfully couched. Trump violence fantasy, kind of like the the takeoff of the Shakespearean tragedy, at where he is actually shown being assassinated in a park in an outdoor play in New York. Um, Justin Chang, I think, reviews for the L.A. Times, and his stuff appears at the end of Fresh Air, like one of the one of the good things NPR does. And boy, NPR in the news lately. We may talk about that. Anyway, he he said so. Here's a lib network and a lib guy. Uh, didn't lo- he didn't love it either. Said it just all kind of lays there and it, tr- it tries to be self-important and tries to advance what it thinks is a compelling storyline and just doesn't. But anyway, it's I'll, not, I, it's I'll, not I'll, even a, it's not even a good storyline. I mean, you don't even know really who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. There's gratuitous violence. At one point, there's a Southerner that executes somebody for being from China. And so that's a big tell. You know how, you know, I mean, it's it's got all of these nods to MAGA and Trump and, and they're playing a game where they're pretending that the president depicted in the movie isn't Trumpian, and of right. course he is. Uh-huh. He's in his third term. He wouldn't leave office. And yet he, you say, we, hates... and, and yet you say it's vague as to who the bad guys are. It sounds like the bad guys are us. Who's us? Our, our side. Yeah, but you don't know what side who anybody is on in the movie, really. I mean, okay, there's this gotcha. weird alliance of Texas and Florida, or no, Texas and, and California, California right. but the Florida right. is on the other side, and, yeah. and so it's a. I mean, I the, the direct. It's a. It's just a. Me- it's a mess. But it really. I, I am very angry about the, the 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 Trump violence aspect of this. This is a big joke to these people. The tr- Trump's trial this week is a big joke. Stephen Colbert last night joking about, oh, uh, everybody hush here in this audience. I need you on that jury pool. The Daily Beast writing an article today. Oh, this judge is not playing around. This is a, he is going to put the hammer down. And Trump, I mean, they're going to convict him, Mark. And I keep warning the audience, it's going to happen. There is virtually no way, he even said it yesterday. Trump came out of the courtroom saying, this judge is not going to let me escape this sham. And those were Trump's words. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way to put it because the judge isn't. Did you see he's not even going to let him go to to his son Barron's high school graduation? And I think you joined me in the chorus of voices that says, Mr. President, the graduation's on a Friday. When court is over on a Thursday, you uh, feel free to inform them that I'm getting in my SUV. I am going to LaGuardia. I am getting on a plane. I'm going to my son's graduation. You try to stop me. Well, he promised him he'll arrest him. He he's he already said yesterday yep. you cannot miss one Do day it. of this proceeding. Mm-hmm. Well, what what happens then? He wins forty states. I, I I tend to agree with you. I hope. I mean, if people aren't waking up and seeing this travesty by now, Jonathan Turley has been splendid on this, so talking good. about reviving a misdemeanor, turning it into a felony through mm-hmm. this 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 torturous process that Alvin Bragg came up with to say, well, and again, once more, who's the victim here? Who's the, just like there was no victim with the half billion dollars he was ordered to pay for the banks, yeah. and the, and the, and who's the victim in this case? There is Stormy a- Daniels has insisted her whole life that she never even had an affair with the guy. Yep. In writing, under oath, <laughs> I've never had an affair, never had an affair. So, so who's victimized here? What he he falsified business records to pay hush money to the porn star. Who's the victim? I mean, I, and I'm not saying that rhetorically. No, no, and it becomes a felony. It becomes a felony when the misdemeanors were conducted in the furtherance of some other, you know, ca- campaign finance related crime. Okay. What is that crime? What's what, the crime? What, what, what is what is the thing, the, the nefarious thing that he was seeking I had, to do? I, I had a guy call the show yesterday toward the end of the show. I got into a knockdown drag out, and it was just beautiful that his name was Francis yeah. from Virginia. <laughs> Lighten up, Francis. I, I, yeah, I could not believe his name was Francis. And he claimed to be a yeah. pastor, and he kept a, attacking Trump, saying, you know, you go ahead and vote for a guy who cheated on his wife with a porn star. Cheated on his wife with a porn mm. star. That's what he kept repeating. And I, and I said to him, well, you think that's a crime, or do you think that's between him and his wife? Well, you go, and that—that that was what he kept continually insisting over and over again. And he's just delighted that Trump is in this legal legal peril right now. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, "You're not going to maybe be so smug 
the morning of November the 6th. Gosh, Mark, I mean, this this is so epic to watch what is happening, and I am blessed, and you're blessed to be in front of a microphone, and we're going to kind of get through all this together with our audience. And speaking of what we do for a living, I neglected because I wasn't feeling too hot yesterday with the jet lag. Finally got a great night's sleep last night. He's My first back. night. I am back. I'm still I'm still congested. I wonder if congestion is a symptom of jet lag. You think? Maybe well, you're they in, that, in that sealed tube filled with Lord knows what kind of petri dish of humanity that you were on that plane with. So I don't and know. And I was and I was back in the back of the plane in the middle seat. I mean, wait, wait, I was wait, stuck wait, 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 I don't believe that. My, my, uh, Mike, I will don't, admit, Mike, don't fly that way. <laughs> I will admit Delta's got a pretty good international first class. They got Very they good. got a nice those Thank pods you. are pretty cool. Although the, it is weird. The pod? What are you in suspended animation? Yeah, well they they have giant pods in first class class and when you oh, and when you recline clothes. it turns into like a fly flat bed but oh, what's man. weird is when it goes into the bed mode yeah I, I, here i am for, listen to me complaining about first class on, yep. on a trip to tokyo, tokyo. vintage it's, bike but it's very your feet are very narrow it goes into like a little tube and Ooh. i don't like I can't really move around all that much. Is, I, foot, I, is it foot claustrophobia? Or you, is there's foot claustrophobia? You can't you can't yeah. like thrash your feet around a little bit. But it's <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's a got a big, yeah, I mean, but 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 anyway, we I, I I had this awful jet lag coming back Friday night. I didn't sleep mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Finally got a good night's sleep last night, but still feel a little congested. But but raring and ready to go. And I forgot to congratulate you on making the Talkers Magazine Heavy Hundred oh, list thank you again. Very much. Congratulations. Very nice. You know, this is a it's a highly contested list um, because and, and there's a lot of good people who aren't on the list. You think about it. There are hundreds of talk show hosts in America there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like there's 30 of us. And so every year, Talkers Magazine, which is considered the Bible of the talk radio industry, publishes this list. And I remember the first year I got on it, I was doing afternoons at WGY in Albany, New York. I called mm-hmm. Denise. I said, I can't believe it. I made the heavy hundred list. And, and it was and I've been on it ever since. And it's so fun to see the list come out and then look at my friends and see who's on there, who's not. I mean, yep. I've got some friends. Who it's very high the... school. Well, yeah, it's, it's like Mean Girls. It's right out of Mean Girls. What's and we're looking out there? At... Who's ahead yeah, of me? Right, well, right, right. Which, and, 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 and who's ahead of my friends? Because I'm filled with gratitude, but I have an enormous gripe with, with folks. That, you're, 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 of course, in the top ten, because look at you. Uh, well, I've, I wasn't, I though, a, last have, year. I'm huge, back in the top I have a huge, ten. Well, I have a huge gripe of... Of about at least half of who is three through nine, <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's kind of, but listen to to be in the top ten is cool. To be on the list is cool. And mm. and I was and I admit I was crushed last year when I went from like tenth to eleventh. I mean, listen, mm-hmm. it's like when I wrote my book. Bu- my book. I begged. I prayed to God, please let me be at the bottom of the New York Times bestseller list one week. Mm-hmm. You know what? I was at the bottom of the New York Times bestseller list one week. Hey, God gave I was go. number twenty seven. God gave me my granted my prayer one because you, one week. now with every book you could write a book called the history of pocket lint and it would be Mike Gallagher New York Times uh, bestselling author bestselling author I could call myself go. a New York Times bestselling author That's barely right. I mean I'm, I'm, <laughs> we're on the heavy hundred hey. list. Hey. Kind of barely. I'm number ten, but that's all right. I'll, I'll take ten, top ten. Absolutely. I'm, if you say top ten, you're inferring, well, maybe he's second or third, or maybe he's fourth. I mean, so I just keep it quiet that I'm actually tenth on the top ten, <laughs> top ten list. But anyway, it's kind of fun and a, and a nice uh, little achievement for you, my friend, and for for yours truly. Thank you. And because we got a year ahead of us, this is going to be a wild. I mean, we're looking around at the cities in New York. It happened in Tampa yesterday. They blocked the, traffic the, the here protest. in Tampa yeah. too. Yeah. What what are what are these people thinking? This is like the environmentalists who glue themselves to the Mona Lisa or try to do that. All it does is make people hate you more. Isn't the idea of protests to have people think well of you, think that you have a point, and gravitate toward you? And yet here are people blocking access to to airports in Chicago, San Francisco, blocking bridges. I mean, it shows that there is no there is no thoughtful protest instinct to this. These are just bad people doing bad things, venting rage. It's... Well, Tom, Senator Tom Cotton said, and a little <laughs> little ner- I'm a little nervous about his me- message. Throw but he, he he said, "Hey, take matters in your own hands." Yep. I mean, really, what do you do if you're in the car with Lisa and Ethan? And yeah. you're going over six thirty-five. Late, late, late for a late flight or something. For a flight, or you're going to go to yeah. a funeral or something serious, and they're blocking traffic. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and and here's the wild part: 
None of them apparently are getting arrested except no. except here in Florida. Yeah. Oh, they're oh, arrested have you seen in the, Florida. Have you seen the video of people being just dragged out of intersections? You bet. Th- thank you, Governor DeSantis. That's how you do it. That's, That's how it's done. How you do it. That, they don't do that in Chicago. They're not doing that in New York. No, they're not doing that anywhere not. else. No. They're not doing it in Austin. But in Florida, hey, you go mm-hmm. to jail. Why can't? How is that not a crime? How is it not it's a, a crime? crime? Of course it's a crime. We're in post consequences America. We are in you, you can shoplift now. You, there's all kinds of things you can do because we are in post consequences America at least in some blue cities and some blue states. Where, and and this is particularly sensitive because those people being dragged off of bridges and stuck into paddy wagons if we ever get the nerve to do it, they're Biden voters or potential Biden voters. And you take that rage, you take a look what's going on on the Golden Gate Bridge, you take a look what's going on you know, on the way to Chicago O'Hare. Speaking of Chicago, what kind of a shindig do you think we're going to have with that Democrat convention Ooh. in August? Oh, my, the rioting. Yeah, oh I'm not my. going near that. I, um, I've been to a lot of conventions in my career. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be covering the Milwaukee convention. I'll be in Milwaukee July. for the GOP. Yep, I'll we're be there. Th- just three months just three months away. It'll be we'll here be, before we know it. We'll be broadcasting from there through the mm-hmm. whole process. And Newt Gingrich, incidentally, had a, a, a great message about these death to America, death to Israel protests mm-hmm. that have broken out in Chicago, in Dearborn, Michigan. He said, try them for treason. How, how's that not treason? How, if you walk around and your your position publicly is death to America, mm-hmm. I, I mean, is, it, is, is, is treason not a thing anymore? I, th- I think you have to do something. I think a death treason, to America? I think, I think treason is an act and not just a really repellent message. It's not a threat? No, That's not no, a I threat. Mean, if somebody says death to America and then goes off and forms a cabal of people designed to hurt or kill somebody, then then you got something. Well, we'll see. I'm back to back to Trump's trial, by the way. Just got a text from uh, on, on the My Pillow text line, which you know I'm glued to. I love the instant feedback. I love the the mini focus group when you text me at 800 655 Mike. It's always fun when you text me during my M and M experience with Mark because it gives me a good conversation starter. Because here's a good one from da- from Dallas, Mike mm-hmm. and Mark. I'm not nearly as optimistic about the outcome of Trump's trial as you guys seem to be. I predict he will be found guilty and then mm-hmm. taken out in handcuffs and gone to jail. Then the DNC will challenge his ability to run for president, and a federal judge will rule that he is ineligible, and then but, SCOTUS but not. will not take the case. Therefore, the lower court ruling stands. Then we're, tor- we're tortured with four more years of Biden's destruction. That's absolutely false. That cannot happen. It, it can. You can. You can totally run. People. People have run from pre- Lyndon Larouche. Uh, you know, have, have ran from ran for president from jail. People don't do get that. that though, Mark. They yeah. think they are under the misconception that if you're convicted of a crime, yeah. you can't run for president. Not true. You got. He can't, two vote. He can't vote for himself. <laughs> right. Convicted. But he can. <laughs> but he can oh, run. Of course. He can run, and yeah. and like you said, maybe forty states. I mean, if they arrest this, if they convict this guy and take what him, you wish for. I mean, but but on the other hand, doesn't your heart just sink at the idea it, it of him does. being let off to jail? This is my this is my country. I love my country. I want my country to do good and right things. And uh, I know I'm that sick people, about it. People I support will get in legal trouble. Some you know, as as life plays out. But it needs to be fair. It needs to be just, and this is neither of those. So here we are. It's so wrong. It it's so wrong. And people, and I saw one of the articles referred to it as the cry, the trial of the century. In many ways, it is. We've never seen this before, Mark. We've Not, never seen a president face criminal charges. Tru- truly unprecedented. Yep. But I saw you shrug when I said that, and I find that interesting because you know what's interesting in our world? We realize what a scam it is, but to them. Oh, this is one of the biggest things that's ever happened in the history of America. But it yeah, is. I think it's a trial of the century to them. To, to, to me, it's just a sad, tired example yeah. of the of the weaponization and corruption of our system. You're right. Good take. But here we are. All right. Here we are. Here we man. are. 